Well, good evening, all. I wrap Stan, and here we are with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening. And we're here now on Monday, the 20th of May, 2024, 6 40 p.m. Central Time. You know, I have the impression, I, I get the feel that the stock market's marking time. On the 22nd, we get NVIDIA's earnings. And I saw today two or three brokerage firms raising their overall target, but that's nothing new. You know, think of all the firms that have had raised their targets because you're already over 5,300 in the S&P. You're at 4,000 in the Dow. It didn't get a lot of fanfare, but it should have been. Uh, you're up strong in all the other markets. So that's what I think is going on. You also, at the same time, have had a run to the upside, dramatic one in the copper, the gold, the silver, and believe it or not, even the platinum had a pretty good run with it. Currency markets have gotten very, very quiet. The currency markets are sitting. There was no impact in them off of uh, Iran's president's death and the foreign minister. There is no, doesn't look like there's any shenanigans there. The grain markets, you know, every Monday that you come in, you're gonna get wild action because at this time of the year, too much rain, not enough rain. Uh, there's heat in the forecast, there's not enough heat in the forecast. There's cold in the forecast. There, it, you, you get that craziness at mid-May. Then in June, we shift gears a bit. How hot is it? Is it enough rain? Same thing for July. And then you start looking at how the crops are from the end of July, August into the other part. I've been through this my whole adult life in business as you know, I've been around the grain markets that long and you just get used to it and uh, it's nothing new. That's the best way to, to tell it to you. Now, there's no key US economic data due out in the morning. What we're seeing is we're getting more and more talk from the key central bankers. That's not to say we won't get the Red Book Group. We're going to get that. At the end of the day, we're going to get the API numbers. We're going to get that. But no big economic U.S. data coming out tomorrow. It's more about the Fed talk, and everyone that's talking is higher for longer. That's getting defined. Even Bostic, who has been the ultimate hawk, uh, today said, well, he can still see the possibility of a rate cut this year. Okay. At first, he didn't see any. All right. So we'll see what happens. Mester, who was predicting three, has rolled it back now. She thinks three is too many. So you can see where you're going with this, but the data is going to be the story and that's going to be the key. And this is only May 20th. You got to get the May data, the June data, the July data in your pocket, and then you'll have an idea what's going to happen. Uh, you know, I, I still hear people saying they think the July data is going to do it. I want to go on record. I, I don't see what they're seeing. You'd have to crash in the data, in my opinion, not wobble like we're doing, crash in the data for the uh, May data and the June data for a July move to take place. I don't think the Fed's that aggressive, all right? Nobody's screaming out there, well, we have to do something. It's the opposite if you're listening to the Fed members. And yet, you know, a lot of very good statisticians are making that prediction. I am not in their camp. On the S&P, are we entering a consolidation phase is the question we have to ask ourselves. This is typically how they start. It looks just like this, doesn't it? Not this part right from that on. All right, I'll put my big hand over that. All right, right to there. So this area and that area have a similarity. That's often how you do consolidation. This particular consolidation then ended up with a break that carried to new all-time highs. Most consolidations don't do that. This one changed the market and then it flip-flopped on the market again. You can see that happened mid-April and the market took off one more time. In terms of the swing line, which is a proprietary tool that I created, the trend is up. You've got the pattern of higher lows, you can see them, and higher highs still at work. The market is trading over all the key averages, the 18-day, the 100, and the 200. So we have a bias that's up. When the market's over the 18-day, that determines bias, so that's up. 
the, all of the moving averages are bullish in nature here. Why? The shortest term a average, the 18 is over the green, the 100, and the 100 is over the 200. That's a classic bullish setup. So where might resistance be? Because you're hitting here now at new all-time highs. So how do you pick that? It's typically then the Bollinger Band, which will adjust with the market. Markets only trade over Bollinger Bands and stay over them 5% of the time. They'll get up to it on a regular basis or down to it on a regular basis. But staying outside of the bands, you just do the work yourself. Here, look, at, you gotta come nowhere there. You're for a moment out here, for a moment out here, a little bit there, a little bit there. And then you got under it on this big swing down recently where the market let go of everything. And at the combination of the 100 day average and the Bollinger Band, is that a deja vu for you? Cause Ira was saying, who is that guy? Ira, Ira was saying, that's likely where the market's going to find the pros covering shorts and calling it a day. Well, now you're stretching the market out. And until the red line closes under 79, while it's a consolidation pattern, you got to lose that for me to get excited on the downside that there's more of a correction coming. Don't see it yet. So I still am in the bull camp. That thinking carries me into the NASDAQ, which made a new high for the move today. You know, don't lose sight. You're pretty close to these old highs. You could work higher. But if you lose that embedded reading, you're going to have to say bye. By the way, this is where to look for the next resistance point. Have you ever heard of window envelopes? I cover them in the morning and I do mine a little different as I do so many things that other traders do. And you want to use your window envelopes here to look for resistance because you can't keep assuming you're just going to keep going to the Bollinger Band. Markets stop there sometimes. Now in the Dow, I pointed out to you last week another bullish event. Do you recall me saying we're getting a bullish crossover? The 18-day average had been underneath the 100. This was May 15th. The market then makes its move. When that normally happens, you go up and make new highs. And that's basically what happened. The markets came right up. It's just a high. I don't know how high it'll go. I don't have a crystal ball. What I do have a crystal ball with is one of the better tools, which is if you lose the embedded reading, the upside momentum is gone. Until it's lost, the pros will buy the market. You can see the old highs. That's where your resistance is each time. And that's what the traders, I think, are reaching for. In the Russell, you also have the embedded reading. It's still the same play. Look at the bullish crossover, and then you went up and made the high. Then we get over to the 10-year notes, and I've been telling traders that I think we're going back down to the 18-day average, and I wrote it today in my full research report in, my, in the 30-year bonds, and I see it happening in the 10 and the five years. So I'd be a bit concerned here as it drops, that means yields are going back up for whatever reason, that's what's going on. In the dollar index, the trend is down in an oversold market. You wanna get nervous if you take out the high of Friday. If that high is taken out, the 104.68, you start a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, assuming you don't take out today's low first. In the euro, you're fighting a battle. This is why I'm concerned right here. The euro got up to the first challenge of a 200-day average in gray, and the green is the 100 and the Bollinger Band. That's an awful lot of resistance. That is not a bear signal. It is a signal to me that I would tell my subscribers, my clients, hey, guys, I think this is where the pros are taking money off the table. It's still bullish, but I don't know what to do with it right there. I want to see those wage numbers that are due out and uh, other things. They start coming out in Europe. Uh, we get some, I think, tomorrow. Wednesday, I know, is a big day. In the British pound, are they going to see a rate cut or not? Well, the market acts like they're not. and yet, but Why? Because normally when a central bank starts cutting the interest rate, cutting the rate, what takes place initially is traders go, oh, I can get a higher yield somewhere else. I don't want to own that. That's the thinking. In other cases, if the market's been depressed, 
recessionary depressed, and they start cutting, people want to own the currency because they're saying things are going to get better. If they're cutting rates, they're going to spur on the economy. I want to be there. So you have to understand where you're at in the spectrum. And I cover that in my morning subscriber videos. I don't want to give you everything right here. Then we look at Bitcoin, which is up and over the upper band. Now, why is Bitcoin up today? Why is Ether up? Because again, the SEC has to make a decision. I think it's on the 23rd and 24th about the two funds that have applied for ETFs. Are they going to deny it or accept it? Just like before, when you accept this, you get an influx of money. We saw that happen when it happened back here with, with Gensler approving Remember in Bitcoin, he approved the ETFs, the money flowed in, Ether's the next one. So they go in unison to a degree with that. Keep that in the back of your mind. We then look at the differential of how you've fallen from 520 to 440, straight down. That's too much. I'm not one to pick a bottom, but that's an awful big break. I, I, can, I can see a reason for no other reason that the spread traders are doing some short covering. You have a lower low, higher high. You ran into the resistance of the 18-day average. When you lost the bearish embedded reading here, that was the objective. You hit it. Same type of plays through here. You hit that average now. Gasoline. What did I tell you last week? I thought, I think I, I was doing the weekly chart for you. First, the, uh, the uh, daily on Thursday, and we were rallying, and let's go there. And as you're coming up, I said, you might make a run to the 18-day average. You lost the bearish embedded reading, but that should be the first resistance point. Could it go higher? Sure, but it should have that as the resistance point would have been what I said. And this is how you've ended up, and this is where you're at right now. So your battleground is for support, either the 100 or the 200-day average up to the resistance right here. Outside day down, you'd have to take out today's high which you could see that peak there. And if you get over that, you got to close strong and that could tell you that, hey, this market just wants to run a bit more yet. I don't see that as the case. I'm surprised that natural gas on the first run to the 200 day average just went over it and stayed like that. I wouldn't trust it. 200 day averages are almost one year worth of data. Uh, you're embedded. You know that I'm bullish, you're bullish. This is running the Bollinger Band. It's a powerhouse market and it is a major bottom formation. This isn't the trade bottom. This is a bigger bottom. It went so long doing that. So I, I get that and I get the short covering, but I'd still be a bit cautious right here. We'll see if the market just keeps running. I don't think it will. I'm also not a top picker, but that's what I, I would tell you. Would I tell you to go bearish? Absolutely not. Getting out of longs and going bearish are two different worlds. All right. Do you trade futures, stocks, spiders, ETFs? I have something for all of you. And basically, starting at 6 in the morning, I put up my futures video. And 9 o'clock, quarter to 9, and this is a.m. Central Time, I put out my stocks and my spiders. So here's what they'll look like on the website. You go in, there's a member login. By the way, when you click on the play, there, a scroll bar will show up and you can make this full screen, of course. Um, and if you move on it, it shows you what section you're in. What are we covering? Are we covering the metals? Am I in the interest rate section? You can scroll and get right where you want to in both the spider and that. The charts will look more like this, more studies. Not a lot. There's five technical indicators. That's it. So on the five indicators, I show you how I work with them. I teach in every single video. So if a trade recommendation is there, number one, why? Number one. Number two, what's the chart pattern look like on the daily, the weekly chart? Are they fighting each other? Are they in agreement with each other? Where are we? It'll generally be 40 plus charts on the futures, the same amount in the spiders and the ETFs. And part of your subscription, if you have a question, as most of you know, you can write me. I had a gentleman write me. I couldn't even get to it this morning. And then he wrote me and said he already got out of the markets because normally I answer, but I can't do it just when you write. It's gonna, I need a little time to catch up with my own work as I'm doing a lot of things for this. My, my first thing in the morning is putting out all the research for people, writing the newsletter, getting the combo package out, 
trade recommendations, keeping up with them. And that's the other thing we do. In the videos, if I have a current recommendation, I keep up with it till it's closed. I don't publish track records. I'm not managing your money. I don't manage anyone's money. Not interested in doing it. I've tried it. I don't want my phones in the middle of me in my thought process ringing. Hey, Ira, explain to me that trade. I don't have time for that. All right. So this is how I do it. But I do make short videos for my subscribers and answer their questions that way. That way I'm talking right to you. I'm doing the chart action you've got and giving you my best explanation possible. I hope that works out. Just go to irapstein.com under research. It's all explained. Remember, I have my special gold report. It ends, the last full day is today, Tuesday. So I don't know what time it comes off Wednesday, but it comes off the website. They're only up for three business days. You can move your cursor to the top here on the research that's there. And when you're there to see the spider package and all, that's right where the special report is on the GLD and the gold. I'm Ira. You have a good day. I'm going to do another special report, I think, tomorrow. So look for it. We'll see which ones I want to do. Take care.